are you a social media manager who struggles to communicate the value and impact of your social media efforts with your clients on a monthly basis, then this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to share my exact steps on creating an analytics report so that you can communicate with your clients the value and impact that you're making with your social media efforts. If you're new here, make sure you grab my free roadmap to becoming a six-figure social media manager in the comments below. Now, if you stay all the way till the end, I'm actually sharing a free freebie that will really help you throughout this entire process. It's a cheat sheet that helps you determine what metrics based on the social media and business goals that you need to track, okay? So that you will never be confused when creating these reports. Now, hey, my name is Mill and I own a multi six figure social media agency and I now help social media managers do the same. Now, the very first thing you will want to do when creating an analytics report is determining the right metrics to track, okay? If you have created a strategy for the client before starting on their social media management, then you should already have KPIs and metrics that you are going to track. But if this is not the case, then now is the time to pick and choose which metrics are actually important for you to track to see whether you're working towards their goals. Now, to give you an example, if a client comes to you completely from scratch, they're brand new to social media and starting a new account, then their goal will always be brand awareness because of course people don't know them yet on social media. Now, some metrics that go hand in hand with brand awareness are audience growth, reach, impressions and you can track these overall on a 30 day monthly basis but you can also track them per post so those are two different things to make it a lot easier for you i have created a cheat sheet that you can download below that will share based on the goals whether it's brand awareness brand engagement or lead generation what type of metrics you will want to track for this client okay but determining what metrics are important for you to track is the very first step. There are gonna be a ton of metrics for you to pull from, data from, but not every single metric really applies to them or is that important for you to track, okay? So again, determine what metrics are important, relevant to their goals. Usually this happens within the strategy process, but if you didn't do a strategy, then now is the time to determine this. Now, the second thing you will want to do is check their insights, right? Now that you know what metrics that you're going to look at that are relevant for them, you are actually going to check their analytics. There are actually two ways you can do this. If you're using a social media management scheduler or platform, a third party tool, you can of course pull data from there. But if this is not the case, you can pull data from the platform itself, for example, Instagram. Today, I'm going to use that as an example and I'm gonna pull the data directly from Instagram. So I'm now in my social media insights. And again, in step one, we determined what metrics I need to track, right? Based on my goals. So now let's say that based on my example, I am looking to get more brand awareness, right? I'm going to go in accounts reach. How many accounts did I actually reach in the last 30 days? You do want to look at 30 days. Seven days is usually not enough. And if you report on a monthly basis, you can simply report every 30 days, right? It will tell me exactly how many accounts I reach. That is important for brand awareness. Now, impressions is different than accounts reach. So this is something I'm going to take note of as well. The 400,000 top content is there, uh, profile visits, how many people actually visited my profile? Again, it's great for awareness. So those are some things I'm gonna take note of, right? Um, how many accounts were actually engaged with my content? It's, part, it's also part of awareness because again, the more people are engaged, the more awareness my brand gets, right? For post interactions, another one, shares is huge. The more people share my content, the more I get known across different audiences. So those are all things that I'm gonna take note of, okay? If from, um, your Instagram insights itself. Now, what I personally do is I actually keep track of these insights in an Excel sheet like I'm showing you here. Um, I've listed the most important metrics on the left, the month at the top, and so I can compare each month. Now, do note that I do wanna compare these 30 days to the previous 30 days, right? 
That way you can actually see the progress. You can actually tell a story and see what's going on with the account. If your strategy is working, if you need to change things. Um, so that is something I personally do in an Excel sheet. Of course, you can export data um, from platforms itself, but getting an overview, especially for yourself, to translate the data to a client later on, communicate it to them in a meeting, I highly, highly recommend you keep it basic and use an Excel spreadsheet for each client. Now, the third thing you want to include in your analytics report is the best performing content. Now, while this may seem simple, there's a different way I go about this. Of course, you will have like a top three of best performing content overall. So you definitely want to include these and you can again, add them to the Excel sheet with a top three overall. But another thing that I personally like to do is categorize them based on each metric. So again, I'm gonna go into my insights, into my posts, and I'm gonna look over the past 30 days, um, over all metrics, what was my top three, okay? These are my top three. You can see that this type of content worked well, and so I did it more often, right? I repeated it because I started noticing it's doing well. Another thing that you can do, so here I included the reels and I can actually see overall which post did the best overall based on reach, right? Now I'm gonna go back to posts and now I'm actually gonna sort by um, metric. So again, in step one, we determined what metrics we're going after, right? Again, we keep going with the example of brand awareness, right? So we are looking at impressions. That is a metric we will want to track and we hit apply. And now it shows me the top three based on impressions, right? I'm gonna change this and now I'm going to look for, I'm gonna do follows and I'm gonna hit apply. What you see here is that my top three actually changed. So even though one post might reach the most people, it doesn't necessarily mean that it will get me the most follows. And that's still an important metric for brand awareness as we're still looking to grow, right? So you will see the top three will vary per metric and I like to personally break it down for each metric because let's say we really want more followers, we wanna create more content that you will find under um, those that get the most follows. Again, you can go back in, we are looking at brand awareness, so shares is another one. How often does content get shared? And you will see again a top three and that's very similar um, to reach because you often see that where posts that get shared the most also get the most reach. For your analytics report's sake, if you wanna take it one step further, what you can even do is you can even include the hooks that were used on those posts, you can include the hashtags so that you have a complete overview, especially for yourself, when creating content for the next month, what worked well. So you can reuse that hook or you can tweak it a little bit, use the same hashtag set, etc. This is all super useful information to you and to communicate to a client. If you are still looking for your first client as a social media manager, then I highly recommend you to check out this video where I share how to get your first client with absolutely no experience. Now, the very final thing you want to do in creating those analytics reports is to summarize and translate what this data actually means to a client. You are a social media professional and while you may understand what the difference between these months, impressions, reach, engaged means, your client is not gonna understand the data like you. And so it's your job to translate to them what this means for their account and how you're going to use this data and information to create content for the next month. Now, please know that insights fluctuate and there's no right or wrong. I know it is un often misunderstood that insights need to blow up every month when you work with a social media manager. That's simply not the case, but the data is there to tell us a story, right? Maybe you tried a new strategy last month by creating more reels. And maybe that didn't necessarily work out because the data showed you that actually the other posts be, that you'd created before worked better. So this is all important information. Now, in order to summarize, what I personally like to do is I create three takeaways for my client to share with them and tell them, hey, this is what we did well, here's where we can improve, and here's how I'm gonna use that data to now create content for the next month and take it into consideration. 
Now, this is also the time for you to ask your clients, hey, are your goals changing, right? Maybe they have a launch coming up and this is gonna tweak your strategy and content too. And then you will want to focus on certain metrics to see what performed well, let's say in their last launch, right? So you can reuse that. So make sure that you don't forget this very last step where you explain to a client what this means for them, how you guys have made progress and what you're going to do next, okay? Um, don't just simply send them a report and call it a day because this is not setting yourself and your client up for success. Now, if you stayed all the way till the end with me to create an analytics report, then make sure you don't forget to download my free analytics cheat sheet so that you can use that every month when creating analytics reports for your clients. If you found this video helpful, make sure you like, subscribe, comment below, and I'll see you next week.